normal for girls and women. Two is, why are we talking about normal anyway? And three, what are, what's the testament to what rethinking normal is and can we do it? Can we rethink normal for girls? What is normal for girls and women? What is normal for girls today? Things are changing, it's a different time. Girls are now being told they can do whatever they want with their careers. They can do whatever they want in their lives, which is great. But in order to be an astronaut or an engineer, they have to be very good in school. So you have to do well in school. So you have lots of expectations. Do well in school, get to the right college, get, you have to find that right major, get a good job, get a good career. So you have to be very, very good in school. But then you have these messages saying, well, you have to look good too. You're a girl, you have to have feminine appeal, and you have to dress well, and you have to have good hair, and you have to kind of be pr provocative to the opposite sex, but not too provocative, that would be slutty. You have, to, you have to be, oh, you can be a little sporty now. It's cool for girls to be sporty, but not too sporty because that would be a jock, okay? So we're, we're kind of walking on a tightrope here where you have to be well-rounded. Girls want to kind of be well-rounded. Oh, and girls also have to have the right character. They're supposed to be kind of nice to each other. Not mean, but nice. Supposed to care about other people, take good care of their younger siblings, and maybe be a little charity-oriented too. So you have to kind of be this really well-rounded girl. You have to be really really good in all these different things, you really have to be perfect. So raise your hand if you ever think that you've attained perfection before. Nobody, nobody, exactly. So this is what society is telling girls they need to do, they need to basically be perfect. And it's not different for women. Women are told they can be in a great career, there's no barriers, they can do whatever they want, but they also have to be good moms, they have to be good wives, good, good loving wives to their husband. Work, that work-family balance, very, very, very tricky. So I say it's time to rethink normal. It, normal isn't even right for girls anymore. It's not right for women. Rethinking normal for me was getting a PhD in developmental psychology and not doing the academic setting, not doing the academic route, but going into the world and saying, what can I do to improve my community? What can I do to kind of match the settings and the experiences and the opportunities I had growing up in a youth developmental setting, in a YMCA? kind of learning how to, to work hard, to use skills, to use, to use mentoring to my best ability. What, how can I, with my degree and my experiences, go out and help the world, make a difference in the world? So that's what I did at Girl Scout Research Institute, part of the Girl Scouts of the USA. Which brings me to the third point, which is Generation STEM. What do girls say about science, technology, engineering, and math? This was the first and biggest research study I did at the Girl Scout Research Institute, which tackled the idea of girls and these fields, science, technology, engineering, and math. These fields that traditionally and stereotypically, girls are not really very good in. Girls don't really choose these fields. Women aren't really in these fields, which is true. That's backed by statistics. What is it about girls that, they, that is unappealing about STEM? What is it that's unappealing about science and math and technology? Well, that's what this study was all about. And as you can see in front of you, we asked girls from across the nation, what do you think about STEM? What do you think about science, technology, engineering, and math? 74% of girls are interested. So there you go. Talk about debunking stereotypes. That's what girls in this generation are doing. They're saying, to heck with that. We like STEM. We like science and math. We like hands-on, inquisitive aspects of learning. We like doing creative problem solving. We like asking questions about the world and finding answers. We don't want to sit in a boring classroom and read out of a book. We want to be in a lab. Not in high school, but when we're kids and learning how to do exp experiments and doing STEM in the schools right away. So among the girls who are interested in STEM, again, that's 74%, so that's a big, big chunk, 81% are interested in STEM careers. How about that? In our best case scenario, 81% of this, this generation of girls, 12 to 18, could end up in a STEM career in the future. How about that for impressive? Girls who are interested in STEM or STEM girls, there's basically four ingredients to them. They are obviously very good in school. There's no surprise with that. They have exposure to STEM, they know what the heck STEM is, they know what engineering is, they know that it's more than just, oh, this weird word that I've never heard of before. They kind of can explain what it is. They have adult support, they have at least one adult in their life telling them, this is the field you can be in, this is where you can get good money, this is where you can make a difference in the world. And they are also confident. We talked a lot about confidence today. Confidence for girls is huge, it's everything for girls. So they're confident in their STEM, their science and math, abilities, four ingredients, okay? Just like me, girls want to make a difference in the world and they want to help people. They don't want to make money, 
They don't want to be the boss. They don't want to be in charge of other people. They want to make a difference and they want to help the world. They can do this through STEM if we give them the resources. That's really all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you.